Go ahead. Thank you. One of the disadvantages of going last is that all your best lines have been stolen <laughs> or have been gone before you. We're saving the best to last. Well, indeed. Thank you, Chair. Um, no uh, Minister, I, I, I completely support this legislation and really welcome it. I think your explanation of it today and the hard work that went into the, uh, you know, the um, consultation in, in the lead up to this legislation has been, ver has been just excellent. It's been really good. Um, I think that I, I really appreciate the distinction uh, between trafficking and smuggling. Of course I do. But I, I, I suppose in, in recent weeks, I, like I'm sure many other members of this House, uh, have been in receipt of emails from people living in Afghanistan and uh, desperate to get out, or else people living in Dublin with family members, spouses and otherwise uh, in Afghanistan and desperate to get, get them out. And it has given me the very slightest sliver of insight into how desperate it must be to call upon the services of smugglers, smugglers or to find yourself in a situation where you are trafficked. So I, I, I suppose we, we, it, it's a, it, there is a coercion possibility, there is a desperation uh, in, in that, uh, that I think that at the heart of this, ensuring that the individual isn't criminalised is really, is really very good, it's really humanitarian and I appreciate that very much so. Um, I, I, like others, I really welcome the, the convictions for human trafficking this week. Uh, I think it's a really important signal. I'm glad that as a government we sent out press releases on it to make sure it was highlighted and that nobody missed it uh, in, in Mullingar Court. Uh, because I think that there is, a, there is a disbelief amongst ordinary people living in Ireland that they are encountering people that are, are trafficked into the country on a daily basis. Um, I, I, I think that when we move to a situation where, where services can be employed by ordinary individuals, be they domestic, gardening, you know, hospitality, any of those things, especially via platforms. So if you need somebody to come and clean your house, you can book an hour on, on a platform, you can book several hours. You know, it's that ease of, of access and someone is sent who may or may not speak English, and that individual then, we don't know what their, their lawful status, their legal status in the country, we don't know anything really about them. We're relying that the platform is a bona fides platform. Uh, and, and there is a gap there, I think, increasingly, where probably a lot of people have encountered, either also in the hospitality industry and otherwise, um, have encountered people who have been trafficked. And I had, a, so I suppose, I had a, a person contact me uh, in, uh, just over a year ago who had someone come cleaning their house and they got suspicious because the person was extremely nervous. And making that distinction of, is this person someone who suffers from a, a, you know, some sort of nervous disorder, or is just by nature a very a meek individual in personality, or is this someone who's trafficked? And I, I connected them up with Ruhama, who gave them fantastic advice, and they are just the most amazing, fantastic organization. Uh, so I, I think that we need to have uh, an information campaign on how do you recognize trafficking? How do you know that you're encountering someone who has been trafficked into the country? You know, the, the stereotypes we have in our, heart, in our heads is the brothels, you know, sex workers or sexual exploitation. We, we have that image and we have that maybe from movies or otherwise, but the everyday ordinary services, and I think as people reach out and start looking for childcare, you know, as there's a, a demand and, and a, a, a pressure on getting childcare services, I think that we could come across trafficking more and more and more. So I, I, I say that recognising the, 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 the distinction certainly in the two. I, I welcome that last year, I, I mean, a, a couple of things. The, the National Af Action Plan on Trafficking, a, a, a excellent. The, the National Referral Mechanism to allow victims to come forward, again, I mean, really, really excellent developments. Um, I think I, I would look for where, where is the review at, I would ask you the question, on the um, criminal law sexual offences, uh, the 2017 review that began last year in September of last year, because that looked at, I mean obviously that was a, a piece of legislation that criminalised those who pay for sex um, and, though, and pay for the sexual activities with trafficked persons, um, which was a real step forward and I think was a fantastic step forward, but there is maybe the inadvertent uh, consequence and the unintended consequence there that where two 
legitimate sex workers work together that, that maybe they find themselves in a situation where they are uh, liable for it being an offence. Uh, so I'd appreciate a comment on that, but thank you, and obviously I support the legislation.